Hello everyone, I would like to take just a few minutes to show you what programs I use in my Linux photography workflow. We won't be going through start to finish and editing anything, it's just a basic overview of what programs I use and what I use them for. The first program would be Rapid Photo Downloader. I love this program because it helps me with naming my files properly and the folder structure in which I put those images. So first I'll show you what folder structure I use. And over the last few years I've kind of played with folder structure, but this is what I've settled on. It seems to be what works best for me and the type of photography that I do. So all the images will go into a year folder, then they go into a year month folder, and then they go into a job code folder. This is especially helpful for when I'm shooting a job that takes a couple days and maybe a couple weeks in which I'm shooting images for that job. And then when I go to edit, all of those images are in typically a single job code folder unless we change months. This is even helpful for me in just taking pictures of my family and the animals that I have. So if you see here, these are images that I took today of my fish and I've already pulled these off. So they are kind of shaded out a little bit. Um, so it's saying that you don't need to download these. You've already got them downloaded. That is super nice. So then the next thing is how I rename my images. So all of them start with like who they are taking them for, then the date, then the job code, and then a unique image identification number. And the same thing is with my videos. But it is super easy to do a custom renaming of your images, especially in this version of Rapid Photo Downloader. So then you can you can pop in any of these different variables into your image naming scheme. And then of course I've got this preset saved, or you could use you know any one of these preset ones. After that, images are usually brought into Darktable. So Darktable is where I do tagging if anything needs tagging. I can cull by choosing what images I like best. So here I've given this one a four star. I've condensed my views to anything with just four stars. Then in I pull it into darkroom where I can do my editing. So this is my favorites. I actually have quite a few different modules on favorites. Um, you can have as many as you like or dislike if you go to modules. See if you click on it, now this one is no longer visible. If I click on it again, now it'll show up in this group. And if I click on it one more time, it is now added to my favorites. So you can have as many or as few as you want. I like to have all the modules on um, by default. So even if there's something that I don't regularly use, I can go open it up. But for the most part, anything that I'm going to use in an image is now right here in this favorites group. What I use the most is typically um, exposure, if I need to bring that up just a little bit. I try to keep that accurate and in food photography, I rarely need this exposure module. Uh, lens correction is awesome. I use perspective the most if I'm dealing with buildings or inside a house, more real estate type stuff. Um, equalizer, color zones. Color zones is another one of my absolute favorites and I use it a lot for food photography. So here, just for fun, we can bring up 
this color in her hair. So this, so this shows me right here where that color is on the graph. And if I bring it down, we can darken that color. If we bring it up, we can lighten that color. Or I can change the saturation of it. More saturated, less saturated. And it's also affecting her shirt. So if I wanted to, I can go in and do a drawn mask and just draw out just her hair so it would only be affecting her hair. Or I could do a parametric mask. These are really neat because then I can select just the hue that I want. So the hue here in her hair, it now shows up on this. This shows me what's affected by the mask and now I can start limiting things. So it's a little harder in the red scale. So now if I was to use this mask, this is the only thing that would be affected by it. And right now that would look really strange if I was to only do that much of her hair. Make just that section super vibrant. Yeah, that looks really weird. <laughs> so it's something that you can really take the time with and, and make some super fine tune adjustments with. A lot of these modules have that. That's one thing I love about Dark Table is most of these modules, I have these masks where I can affect only a certain area. And there's sometimes where I will use the mask and then there are other times where I will just export multiple versions of an image and then bring them together in Darktable. That's typically when I'm dealing with some really wonky multicolored lighting where one side of the face is one color and the other side of the face is another color because there's two different lights coming in. And then I will make one adjustment where the white balance is right for this side and one adjustment where the white balance is right on this side. And then in GIMP, which is the next program we'll talk about, I'll bring them together. So I end up using GIMP quite a bit. So in this image, the GIMP edit is super, super simple. I've brought together two images that I like. So if I turn off this one, then you can see I've got this whiteboard here in the way. That wouldn't look very good for a finished image, but this whiteboard is giving me the highlight that I want right here on this lemon. You see that nice little shine. Now, without that whiteboard, that lemon looks really flat and ugly. So I've taken another image where my bottle is not in the shot at all and this white card is not in the shot. And then I've just painted that section in so my background is nice and uniform and pretty, but that white card is no longer in my shot. But in GIMP, I do all kinds of things. So in chocolate, it'll look just fine, you know, to your eye. But if you take especially a macro shot of chocolate, you can see all these little scratches and dents. And so I'll clean that out product shots. I use GIMP to clean up dust, that sort of thing. Like one job I've been working on where the image or the food, sorry, is shot on a white plate on a white background. Well, that means the only thing you have left is color. And sometimes those colors can be slightly off the white balance is right. But the colors of the food need just a little bit of tweaking to make sure that they are, they're true, they look their best. And so I will export multiple versions from Darktable, bring them into GIMP, and merge only the parts of each image that I want. Um, I've also used GIMP for real estate photography, especially in a room that is really large take multiple images from the floor up and then sideways, bring them all together in GIMP 
and then so you'll have images stacked on top of each other and you're only bringing in what you want from each image, the best colors from multiple exposures. So doing some of this in GIMP, you can end up with files that are a few gigs large and be taking up 10 gigabytes of RAM or more just because of the, the vast image size. The only thing, that, or the biggest thing that GIMP right now is lacking, which is coming, is undestructive editing. So let's say I wanted to add, let's just do a gradient real quick. Let's add another layer. Let's set this to um, soft light transparency. Okay, so I'm going to pop a gradient on this new layer that we just created. So over here my gradient is white, over here my gradient is dark. It's affecting the image this way because of the mode that I chose. That's a whole different topic that you could go into. Um, but so right now I can make adjustments to this gradient. Let's go ahead and reverse those colors. So my dark's on top and my light's on bottom, which would make more sense for an image like this anyway. Okay, so I'm making adjustments, getting it exactly to where I want. All right, and I hit enter. Now that is now set that gradient and I can no longer adjust it. I have to delete this and do it again if I decide I wanted to make changes. But coming down the line, something that they are vigorously working towards is making it so it's non-destructive editing. So then I can come back and say I wanted to make tweaks to this gradient. I want this black to come down just a little bit further. Um, I will eventually be able to do this. This is one of the things that um, many of the proprietary programs can do. And it's something I'm very excited to happen <laughs> later down the road. That's just a quick rundown of the three programs that I use for my Linux photography workflow. I'd like to spend just a little more time on each program. There's more to Rapid Photo. There's so much more, incredibly more to Darktable. It is, it's amazing all the things that it can do. And there is so much more to GIMP. I don't know that I'm the best one for full overviews or in-depth stuff of each program, but I can definitely spend more time showing how I work within each program, taking an image from Rapid Photo all the way to finishing up in GIMP. And that's something I'd like to do in the near future. So thank you. I hope that helps.